Welcome to another Wednesday night class in Harad Banon, Avenue S, the corner of East 9th. We are learning Pirashat Bihukotai. The first Pasuk in this week's Parasha says like this Im Bihukotai Telechu, the et Mizvotai Tishmeru Vasitem Otam. If you will walk in my commandments, observe my mitzvot and perform them, what will happen as a result? I will give or provide your rains in the right time. The Rashi tells us the right time is Friday night. That's a beracha when it rains. During the week, it's not so much because people have to go to work. So it's a damper on their business. The best time for it to rain is Friday night. And also what will happen? And the land will give its produce. And the tree of the field will give its fruit. So Rashi tells us, the first Rashi in this week's parasha says, Im telechu amelim batorah. You have to toil in learning Torah. You have to make Torah part and parcel of your life. We will tonight see a Gemara in Masechet Ketubot, Daf Ayn Zayn Amud Bet, Mamash, the last page of Perek Shevi'in Masechet Ketubot, it is a Gemara that you're all familiar with. And we'll, it's a lengthy Gemara. We won't read the whole thing. We'll just take the pieces that we need. And like I said, you are familiar with this Gemara. But tonight we'll try to explain it in a different way. Says the Gemara. Makhriz Rabbi Yohanan. Rabbi Yohanan used to warn people. He zaharu mezevuve shel ba'ale ra'atan. Back then there was a disease called ra'atan. Whatever the disease is. The problem with this disease, it was very contagious that anything that came in touch with a person that has this disease will carry its disease and affect other people. Even flies. If a fly falls or lands on the body of this person that has this disease and the fly goes on another person, it carries the disease and affects the other person. So Rabbi Yohanan needs to say, be careful, I'm warning you. There are people amongst us, well, not really amongst us because we shoo them outside of the camp or outside of the community. They live alone, they dwell alone. Just be careful, I'm warning you. Be careful from the flies. If you have any idea, how would they know? I don't know, the Gemara doesn't say. But if you have any idea that these flies came in touch or in contact with these people that were affected or afflicted with Zira'atan, be careful. Says the Gemara, Rabbi Zera. Rabbi Zera was so diligent and so careful not to be affected by these flies, he wouldn't even, if he sees a fly coming close, he would change direction. He wouldn't walk in the same direction as the wind carrying these flies. Okay? Rabbi Al-Azhar used to stay very far away from their camps, from their dwellings, from the people. Rabbi Amen and Rabbi Aseh these two rabbis, Rabbi Amev Rabbi Aseh, la havu akhle mi hi mebu'a. If they knew that there's any eggs that came from this vicinity where these people ba'alera atan were, they wouldn't eat from these eggs. Fine? That's how careful they were. This is the Gemara, this is the piece of the Gemara that we want to explain tonight. Rabbi Yoshua ben Levi. That's the name of the rabbi. Rabbi Yoshua ben Levi. Mechrach behu. He used to go to them, sit with them, Asik ba Torah, and he used to learn and teach them Torah over there, next to those people. Amar, and he used to say when they asked him, "Are you not afraid?" He used to say, "Amar, ayelet ahavim ve'yalat hen." The Torah is so graceful. The Torah is so beautiful. In hen ma'ala al domdeha agune la magna. The Torah is so special and so precious. It's not possible that I can be damaged if I am teaching Torah even to this person that's afflicted with the disease. Ki hava shachib. When it came time for the Bi'o Shabbat and Levi to pass away, the Malach HaMavit comes over to him. He says, I'm here to do my job. And long story short, he says, I won't go unless you show me my place in Gan Eden. He says, no problem. He says, I'll show you your place in Gan Eden. He said, but wait one second. I'm afraid of you, the Malach HaMavit. Give me your sword. You might stab me in the back. He says, no problem. He gave him his sword. He takes him to Gan Eden. Rabbi Yosha ben Levi says, is that my spot? He says, yes. He jumps in Gan Eden. Rabbi Yosha ben Levi was one of the ten 
people, I'm not going to say Sadiqeen because some of them, 10 people that walked in Gan Eden alive. Mamash, they didn't die, they walked straight in Gan Eden. So now he's in Gan Eden and Malachah Mabi tells him, okay, but what about my sword? He said, I swear I'm not giving you back your sword. So the Malachah Mabi says, God, he talks to Hashem, he says, what's going on over here? The guy swears he's not giving back my sword. I need the sword because, you know, that, that's my job. So Hashem said to the Malachah Mabi, to the ministering angels, let's check his records. We'll leave him in Gan Eden. If any time he made a vow, he kept his promise. If he ever annulled his vows, we'll take him out. They checked his records. They said, this man is gold. He's golden. Rabbi Yosha ben Levi says, big sadiq. So he could stay in Gan Eden. However, please, Rabbi Yosha ben Levi, please give him back his sword because he needs it. Rabbi Yosha ben Levi says, no problem. Here you go. Take the sword. So now he's in Gan Eden. Who comes to greet him? Eliyahu and Navi. Says the Gemara, Eliyahu Navi sees him and Eliyahu Navi starts proclaiming, Make way for the Bioshua ben Levi. Where's the red carpet? Where's the wine? Where's the champagne? Make way for the Bioshua ben Levi. Panu lo derech, panu lo derech. And who hears this? The Bishim Ambar Yochai. The Bishim Ambar Yochai is in Gan Eden already. He deceased a while back and he hears this. Says the Gemara like this. And I want you to pay close attention to this Gemara. Because we might have a conflicting midrash later. Azal, so he goes, Ashkahel Rabbi Yoshua ben Yochai. He sees Rabbi Yoshua ben Yochai, Bar Yochai, the Havaya Tib al Telat Asar Tachtise Pisa. He was sitting on 13 gold chairs, if, if you want to say. Amar Le, so Rabbi Yoshua ben Levi is, is in, right now in close proximity or face to face with Rashbi, with Rabbi Shem Abri Yochai. So Rabbi Shem Abri Yochai tells him, Amar Le, at Hava Bar Levi, you're Bar Levi, which means Ben Levi. You're the famous rabbi. Amar Lehen says, yes. See, he says, Nirata Keshet Beyamecha. Says, let me ask you a question. In your generation, the whole time you were alive, was there a rainbow? Amar Lehen, he says, yes, there was a rainbow. Imken. Says Rashbi, Rabbi Shema Bar Yochai, tells Rabbi Shema Levi, if that's the case, i'ata bar levai. You're not bar levai. You're not Yoshua ben Levi. Now, what does a rainbow denote? A rainbow denotes that God wanted to destroy the world, but he had mercy on the world and he didn't destroy the world. So Rabbi Shema Bar Yochai never had a rainbow while he was alive. Why? Because he was the defender of the generation. So Rabbi Shema Bar Yochai tells Rabbi Yoshua ben Levi, if there was a rainbow in your time, in your era, in your generation, in your time, that means you weren't a sadiq big enough for me to greet you. Says the Gemara like this, Velahi. No, 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 but really? Really, there wasn't a rainbow in the time of Rabbi Yoshua ben Levi. So then why did he say, yes, there was a rainbow? He says, because I'm, I don't want to show that I'm a big Sadiq, that I was able to prevent catastrophes happening to my generation. So therefore, when he asked me, was there a rainbow in your generation? I said, as, as a, out of humbleness, yes, there was, a, there was a rainbow. But really the Gemara says, there wasn't a rainbow. This is the Gemara. I hope the Gemara is clear. What I learned from this Gemara and just a lesson before we get into really what we want to learn. What I learned is that if a person sacrifices his life and does what he can to learn Torah and teach Torah, no ill can befall him. Rabbi Yoshua ben Levi is teaching all of us. If you are Moser, you're nefesh. If you sacrifice everything that you have to teach Torah, to learn Torah, even these flies of Ba'alera Atan cannot harm you. Now, this is not to say that if a person gets harmed, has the shalom, that doesn't mean, that means he's not learning Torah. I'm not saying that. But I learned from this Gemara that if you are learning Torah, sacrificing everything that you can, when it's hard, when you have problems, when you have issues, yet you go and learn Torah, bless you. Yet you go and you learn Torah or you teach Torah, no harm can befall you. This is the meaning of the pasuk. Im bechukotai telechu. If you walk in my Torah, if you walk with your legs to classes, if you walk with your legs to do chesed, if you walk with your legs, use your legs to do mitzvot, 
And what happens? Now the word Gishmechem means materialistic. Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi was able to go with his materialistic body inside of Gan Eden. Says Hashem, if you make sure you learn Torah, if you walk with my commandments. Now remember what I told you, the first Rashi tells us you have to toil with Torah. It's not enough to learn Torah in this class, in, this, in the confines of this building, and that's it. You have to make it part of your life. Wherever I go, the Torah tells me what to do. If that's the case, nothing can happen to, to your materialistic body. No harm can befall you. What I also learned from this, is in bechukotai telechu. If you learn Torah, benatati gishmechem beitam. Now we said gishmechem is gashmi, materialistic items. You want beracha, you want money, you want amenities, you want luxuries, you want all the nice things in life. You want the gishmechem, the gashmi. You have to learn Torah. The Torah is the source of everything, not the money. Money is not the source of everything that you desire. No. Torah. You have Torah, you have everything. You have no Torah, you have nothing. But again, this is not what I want to base my class on. Just a tidbit. I just uh, wanted to throw in there. What I really want to focus on is when Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, he asks Rabbi Yoshua ben Levi, he says, was there a rainbow in your time? He says, yes, there was. Now, where is Rabbi Yoshua ben Levi right now? He's in Ulam Haba. He's in Gan Eden. Ulam Ha'emet. He's in the real world. How can you lie in the real world? Over here, I can lie. I have a Yetzir Over there, up in Shamayim, there is no evil inclination. There is no Yetzir So how could it be that Rabbi Yoshua ben Levi lied to the face of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. That is the question we have to address tonight. How is he not afraid of lying? I mean, Borei Olam is there. The tribunal court is there. The angels are there. The Avot are there. All the great sages and Sadiqim that passed away of yesteryear. They're all there. You're not afraid of lying in Shamaim? Over here, I, okay. But over there, up in Shamaim, you're not afraid of lying? Now, I told you earlier that there is a conflicting midrash with this Gemara. Now in this Gemara we saw that he sees Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai face to face, correct? We have a midrash over here. The midrash is in Petah Enaim, which means it's brought down by the Petah Enaim, Rabhida, Rabbi Haim Yosef David Azulai. And he quotes the midrash in Bereshit Rabbah Perek Lamedhe. For your convenience, I wrote down the Midrash over here. I copied the Midrash. It says the Midrash like this. Eliyahu zakhul latob v'rebi Yoshua ben Levi havu yatbin tanin b'hada. They were learning together. Imagine learning one-on-one with Eliyahu and Navi. He was learning with Eliyahu and Navi. Matun shemua min d'rebi shim'on ben Yochai. So they came across something that they heard from Rebi shim'on ben Yochai. Now mind you, Rebi shim'on ben Yochai is no longer alive. He passed away. But they're learning something that they heard from him a while back. Amre. So they said one to another. We have a problem with what he said. Let's go and ask him. They mean they could just transport whenever they want up and down. Very nice, right? You know, I saw in, uh, where was it? In Times Square. Now they have a portal. Now you could see Dublin. You saw that? Out of all cities in the world, what I want to see is Dublin. I mean, show me another city, but I don't know why. You saw this, Danny? They have a portal. I think it's in Times Square, right, Moshe? Or somewhere in the city. There's a portal where you actually see people in, uh, in Ireland. Why? I have no idea. But this is what they did. They were able to go, not Dublin, but they were able to go up to Shamaim whenever they wanted. Al Eliyahu Zakhur Latob Legabe. So Eliyahu Navi Zakhur Latob goes up first. And then following him goes Rabbi Yoshua ben Levi. Amar le min amach. So Rabbi Shimon bar Yochai sees Eliyahu and Navi. And he says, who's with you? I sense there's somebody with you. Who do you bring with you? Who's the visitor? Amar le gadol hador. Rabbi Yoshua ben Levi. He says, what? 
I brought with me the great sage, the great rabbi of the generation, Rabbi Yoshua ben Levi. Amale, so Rabbi Shimon bar Yochai screams from across the room. He doesn't see Rabbi Yoshua ben Levi. He screams across the room. Nirata keshet be'amecha. Was there um, a, a, a rainbow in your area, in your time, in your generation? Amar le hen. He says yes. Amar im nirah keshet be'amecha. Let atake dai le mehmer sabar apai. If really there was a, a rainbow in your generation, you cannot see my face. So this midrash is conflicting with the Gemara. The Gemara says that he saw his face. Over here he says he didn't see his face. Up for questioning, what's the answer? I don't have an answer for you. But this is the question that we're posing tonight. I don't have an answer for you. I mean, the Hida in the Sefer Peta Hainayim, he says, and I saw Yefet uh, To'ar, uh, and it explains it, but it was hard for me to understand it, and therefore I'm just going to leave it and throw it out there as a question. But maybe, maybe we can explain this whole story with the Havot HaLevavot. Havot HaLevavot is the Musar Sefer you should learn. Yes, there's Mesilat Yesharim, of course. But Havot Alevavot, written by Rabbi Bahaye ibn Pakuda, is a sefer you should all learn. They have it in English also. It's an ethics book. It's a Musar book. It's morals. And he lists in his Sha'ar Abodat Hashem, how to come close to Hashem, how to serve God, different steps how to serve God. So we're talking about the ninth step over here. Dargat Teshi'it. Anashim Hamma'aminim Bat Torah. They believe in the Torah. They believe in retribution and they believe in reward. They learn Torah for the sake of heaven, for the sake of learning Torah. Aval. However, but there is something that sometimes drives them away from learning Torah the right way. One of the rabbis told the students, There is something even worse than sins and transgressions, and this might sometimes, sometimes drive you away from serving God the right way. Rabbi, what is worse than sin? Sinning is the worst thing. What's worse than sin? Amar lahem ha-ga'ava va-yuhara. Horniness and arrogance. Kemo she-omer ha-katuv, as Tomo Amelech writes in Proverbs, to'avat Hashem kol geva lev. Hashem abhors, detests, hates, and disgusts even from people that have haughtiness and arrogance. This is the Havot HaLevavot. With that, we could answer maybe this Gemara and maybe the Midrash. From Shamayim, God Almighty Borei Olam wanted to save Rabbi Yoshua ben Levi from any arrogance he might have. So he gets up there to Shamayim. And when being asked this question by the Bishim Om Bar Yochai, did you have a rainbow in your time? He wanted to say no. But Hashem was afraid, if you want to say, by him saying uh, there was no rainbow in my time, that it might cause him some arrogance. Yes, even up there in Shamayim, and haughtiness, and say, look at me, I was a defender of my generation. I saved all the tragedies from coming. So Hashem puts in his mouth, if you want to say, to say, yes, there was a rainbow. To stop him from that arrogance. That's why the Gemara had to tell you, but really there was no rainbow. Why does the Gemara have to tell me, really there wasn't a rainbow? Because he really wanted to say, there was no rainbow. But from Shamayim, they saved a tzaddik. A tzaddik that wants to serve God in the right way. In Bechukotai Telechu, one that wants to walk in the Torah. So Borei Olam changes the whole world around as it says in Tehillim. Ragle hasidav yishmor. Hashem saves the legs. Ragle 
the legs, which means them, themselves, of the Hasidim, of the rabbis, of the righteous individuals. That's what it means. If you walk in my Torah, if you make my Torah not part of your life, your life. The Torah is not part of my life. The Torah is my life. Then Borei Olam changes everything around. So Rabbi Yosheb ben Levi wanted to say, no, there was no rainbow. But then Hashem said, but it might cause him to have some arrogance and haughtiness. So therefore he made it a switch right away. And the Gemara had to tell you, really there was no rainbow in his time. And the question is, one second. By him saying, there was a rainbow in my time. And he's up there in Ulam Ha'emet. That means there was a rainbow in his time. Because you can't lie up there in Shamaim. I understand, Rabbi, you gave me a nice answer that Hashem put it in his mouth not to have any arrogance and haughtiness. But in the end of the day, Sof called Sof, bottom line, when he says there was a rainbow, that means there was a rainbow. I don't care what, what Hashem is planning. Up there in Ulam Ha'emet, up there in the real world, you can't lie. So was there a rainbow? Was there no rainbow? So to answer this question, we have to see another Gemara. And funny enough, the one who speaks in this Gemara is the same rabbi. The Bi Yeshua ben Levi. This is Gemara, Masechet Shabbat, Dav Petet Amud Bet. Now you're all familiar with what happened to Moshe Rabbeinu when he went up high to Shamayim and he told them, I will be back in 40 days. They miscalculated, comes the evil incarnation, the Satan, Yesara, Malachamavit, and it says in the Gemara, and who tells us this? Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi tells us that the Satan showed them an image of a mitah of Moshe Rabbeinu. He didn't show them the actual coffin of Moshe Rabbeinu because there is no actual coffin. He showed them imagery. Because let's be honest. The evil incarnation is all imagery. That's what he does. Says Rabbi Nachman of Breslev, the Yisra'ara kulot dimyonot. There is no Yisra'ara. You imagine things. The desires and everything you crave, it's all imaginary. You think that you will be happy if you get that item and more times than others, 99% of times, you're never happy even after achieving that item or getting that. Because all imagery. So the Satan shows them an image of the coffin of Moshe Rabbeinu. So now, if the Satan, and, and who says this? The Yosha ben Levi. So if the Satan can show them an, an image of the coffin of Moshe Rabbeinu, can it be that from Shamaim they're showing the Yosha ben Levi an image of a rainbow? So which means when Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi is standing up there in Shamayim and he's being asked this question by Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, did you see an, uh, a, a rainbow? He says yes. He wasn't lying because they showed him an image of a rainbow. But really there was no rainbow. An image of a rainbow. So Rabbi, why did they show him an image of a rainbow? Not to have any yuhara. Not to have any ga'ava. Not to have any holiness. No arrogance. So was he lying to the Bishim Ambar Yuhai? He was not lying at all. He saw an image of a rainbow. He didn't see the actual rainbow. That's why the Gemara had to come later and tell you, but really, there was no rainbow at all. Rainbow there wasn't. An image of a rainbow there was. But I want to continue with this theme of exactly what happened with the Bishim Ambar Yuhai and the Bishu'a bin Levi about in bihukotai telechu, if you walk in my mitzvot, I want to see what it says in the midrash. There is a midrash, it's kind of hot over here, no? It says in the midrash, midrash vaikra rabba perek lamedhe, our midrash. It says the midrash like this. In bihukotai telechu, adahu dikhtiv. You know what it means to walk in my mitzvot? It's talking about David Melech. David Melech says in Tehillim, Perek Kof Yotet, Hishabti derachai, Ve'ashi baraglai el edotecha. Literal meaning in English means, Hishabti derachai. I woke up in the morning and I had my whole itinerary ready. The whole schedule ready. But in the end of the day, 
No matter what I planned, I always found myself in the Beit Midrash. I had meetings. I had appointments. People wanted to see me. I had to govern a few things. David the Melech wasn't only the Melech. It was the Abed Din, the Nasi Sanhedrin. He was the man. But at the end of the day, I don't know how, but I always found myself in Shu. Says the Midrash, Amar David, Ribbono shel olam, Bechol yom vayom haiti mechashev veomer, Limkom peloni, Ulbet dira pelonit ani olech. Like we explained every day, I said I'm going to go here, going to go there. Vayu raglai meviot oti lebate kanasiot velebate midrashot. My legs would take me by themselves to shul. Hadahu dikhtib. That's what it means. Ashiba raglai el edotecha. I returned, Ashiba, I returned my legs to the shul. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what it means. Im bechokotai telechu. If you accustom yourself to always learning Torah, and I don't do anything without checking if the Torah says it's mutar or not, your body changes as a result. It's a whole transformation by yourself. You, you, won't, you know what? You won't even need the flyer to remind you about the ones in I class. You'll go by yourself. Your body, you know, there's something called a biological clock. You know what that means? People just wake up every day at the same time. They don't need an alarm. Why? Because I'm, so, I'm do, doing it for 50 years. My body just wakes up by itself. When you learn Torah, your body will just do the will of God by itself. I don't have to think about making a beracha because it should come naturally to me. It should come natural to me to make a beracha. Me not making a beracha on something has shalom. Me by mistake turning a light on on Shabbat? For sure not. Because I, my body is used to not doing it. Because my body only wants to do the will of God. So I can't live a life other than that. That's what David Melech is saying. With that Midrash, we can understand the Ba'al turim The Ba'al turim says, Im b'chukotai telechu. He says, Rashi tevot abot. Im Aleph, Bechukotai, Bet, Telechu, Taf, Avot. Forefathers. He says, Shetelechu, Bedarkeha, Avot. Walk in the ways of the forefathers. What does that mean? We are obligated every single day to say this sentence. Matai, Yagiru, Maasai, Le Maase, Avotai, Avraham, Mitzhak, Ve Yaakov. When will I ever reach the level of Avraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov? What was their level? What was so special about them? What was so special about them? Well, Avraham Avinu didn't need Borei Olam to remind him to wake up in the morning to sacrifice his son. You tell me to do it, bam, I'm going right away. Yitzhak Avinu also, Avraham, his father tells him, let's go, we're going. He doesn't ask where we're going. God wants us to go, we're going. Yaakov Avinu, how many struggles he had in his life. But this is God's will, so I follow God's will. Says the Ba'la Turim. That's what it means. Im Your body should be used to doing things naturally just like the Avot. Just like David the Melech. David the Melech was a very busy person. He did it all by himself. Yet, somehow, he always found himself in the Bet Midrash. Why? Because that's what my body wants. I got used to it that not only my neshama wants it, my whole body wants it. That's what it means. Im bechokotai telechu. If you follow my Torah, benatati gishmechem be'itam. Your gashmi, your physical, materialistic, will turn into spiritual. That's what it means. You like that, Danny? If you're so used to doing what Hashem wants, the physical itself will turn into spiritual. Because I can't live a life other than doing what Borei Olam wants. And not only that, when I realize, and when I just think about it, I mean, look at the level of Raham, Mitzhak, and Yaakov. And look at my level. Wow. I'm so far away from them. Avraham, Mitzhak, and Yaakov. Look how they worshipped Hashem. 
how they learn Torah Yomam Balayla, and we explained, if you remember in one of the classes, they learned Torah together 15 years, they saw each other. I wasn't in this class, it was in a Shabbat class. 15 years they learned Torah all together. They only wanted to do what Hashem wanted. And then I think about myself, wow, am I even on that level? Will I ever get to that level? I'm not so sure. But I have to say every day, Every single day I have to say to myself, when will I reach their level? I want to tell you uh, Hatam Sofer. Hatam Sofer says like this. You know, in the end of the Perasha, we have the Kelalot. We have the curses. And Aliyah nobody wants to go up to because it's frightening. I personally love to go up to Aliyah. Why? Because Hashem will take all the curses and flip them to Berachot. Why not? But in the last, uh, one of the last few pesukim, or last pesukim over there, it says, "Vezacharti et beriti Yaakov, ve'af et beriti Yitzchak, ve'af et beriti Avraham eskor, ve'ares eskor." Right when Hashem is telling us all the curses, how many curses? Forty-eight curses. Right when uh, forty, I believe. Forty, how many? Forty-nine, something like that. It's, yeah, 98, it's up there. Right when Hashem is telling us all the curses, Hashem says, and I will remember Abraham, Yitzhak, and, Abra and Yaakov. Where is Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov come all the way now in the curses? Now you want to remember them? Says the Hatam Sofer, something frightening. He says, Keneged avotenu ma shehayu avotenu avota olam tzaddikim ugdoshim raui gam anachnu liyot tzaddikim beir ehet. You know why Hashem is so upset? You know why He sends all the curses? Not because you're sinning. Because where do you come from? You forgot where you come from? We come from, we come from royalty. And how many times we say, we come from royalty. So Hashem says, I'm not upset that you're sinning. No, 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 I'm not upset. You have a yes and a I understand that. But, وَزَخَرْتِ et Avraham, وَيِتْحَاكْ en Yaakov. I remember where you came from. He says, كِي زَيْرَعْ كُودِشْ we come from pure seed. And we have who to learn from. We learn from Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. That's what the Baal Turim is saying. You want to learn Torah? You know what will help you learn Torah? Remember where you came from. Remember Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. He says, And with this maybe, Yesh lefaresh lashon havidui. Now, in the vidui, ladies, I'm not so sure if you do the vidui every single day. Yeah, you do it in the nighttime. When you do the vidui, you say, but before you say, you say, I sinned and my father sinned. Hello, why are you bringing your father in here? Leave your father, he's, he passed away a long time ago. Well, leave, leave him alone. Says the Hatam Sofer, it's not talking about your father. It's talking about Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. You know how much shame they get when we don't walk in the ways of Torah and Mizvot? They get disgraced. They get embarrassed. This is who we left in the world. So when we sin, we're including our fathers in them also because we're shaming them. And he says, Ubazeyesh lefaresh. And I can also answer you something else. This is marvelous. Not that before it wasn't, but this is a marvelous answer. He says, Ma she'amru hazal, she'en omrim halel berosh hashana. Ruby, you, you will love this. Why don't we say halel in Rosh Hashanah? Rosh Hashanah, Hashem is writing us all for a good year. We should be happy. You know what the Gemara says? Mishum de sifre hayim be sifre metim petuchim lefanav. Because the book of life and the book of death is open in front of God and you're going to rejoice, says the Hatam Sofer. Wait, 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 wait. I'll give you a different answer. The Israel Omrim Shira, you're going to rejoice? No, no. Hainu, which means, Im Nasim Dugma Maasim Shelanu, Neged Maasehem Shel Metim, Ech lo Nira ve Ech no Mar Shira. You have the book of death. Open in front of you. Doesn't mean your death has the shalom. No. It means all the ones that deceased. 
that were righteous individuals, the holy rabbis, the Gedolim, it's open in front of Hashem. What is Hashem doing at Rosh Hashanah? He is comparing us to the ones in yesteryear. And you want to sing on that day? You have to be petrified, terrified. That's what the Hatam Sofer says. Amazing. Hashem judges us. Are we living up to our potential and our standards? Forget potential. Standard. A standard of a Yehudi, we don't go to certain places. That's my standard. I don't break it. I'm sorry. I don't break it for nothing in the world. A certain standard of a Yehudi should be, I don't eat in a certain place. I don't eat it. I don't care if it's questionable or maybe it has something, nothing is in it. I don't eat there. That's a standard. I don't wear, I don't dress in a certain uh, attire. This, this is the standard of a Yehudi. So it says the Ba'al Turim, that's what it means. Im telechu. You want to walk in the Torah? Remember. You know, the Gentiles, they have this bumper sticker. What would Jay do? Right? What would he do? Yeah, I need to deter you from sinning. You say, what would he do? Would, that, uh, would the Savior sin? No, so you shouldn't sin. But our creed, uh, creed our creed should be, creed is a, is, a, is a rock band. Remember that rock band? It's also a cologne, by the way. Right? Our creed should be, what would Abraham do? What would Abraham do? Tell me. Would Abraham miss Minha? You tell me, yeah, because there was no Minha by Abraham's son. Well, was the, would Abraham, right? You tell me that. Would, would Abraham miss Shahrit? I don't think so. Why are we missing Shahrit? That's what the Ba'al Turim is saying. You want to have a deterrent in your life and make sure that you're always learning Torah and doing mitzvot? Just stop for a minute. Just stop for a minute and say, Am I really doing what I'm supposed to be doing? Let's go to David the Melech. David the Melech tells us that his legs walked by themselves to the Beit Midrash. About David the Melech's father, Yishai, in Gemara Masechet Shabbat, Nun He Amud Bet, says the Gemara, Yishai was one of the four people that passed away with no sin. So why did he pass away? Because everybody has to pass away. That's the decree, that's the Gezerah. One of four people that never sinned. So Abraham, uh, so David the Melech, pardon me, David the Melech says, my father never sinned in his life. Am I living up to my potential to emulate and to copy my father? Not David the Melech. David the Melech is saying that. David the Melech says in the Gemara about him, in the Gemara Shabbat over there, you cannot say that David the Melech sinned. David the Melech didn't sin. Yet the whole time he's saying about himself, oh, maybe I sinned. Maybe I'm not like my father Yishai. And that's why, what does David Amenach say? Hishabti derachai. I'm thinking about my ways in life and I didn't live up to my potential or at least what I'm supposed to be and copy my father. So you know what I do? And I right away run to shul. And you know what the next pasuk is? Hashti velo itmahmati lishmor mitzvotecha. I didn't... Hasten, I, I mean, uh, what's hasten? Hasten is fast? So I was, ha- how do you say, I was haste? I went hastily. Good. See, it's good. I went hastily. I ran to do your mizot. But why? Because if I always think about my father, Yishai, ladies and gentlemen, if we always think about our forefathers, our grandfathers, our grandmothers, how much did they sacrifice for us to be here today? What did they go through? And especially if you have uh, grandparents or in your family people that survived the Holocaust. What did they go through for us to act in the way that we're acting? Has shalom. So that's what David Melech says. Right away, I ran, I ran to the Beit Midrash. Then he says about himself, in Tehillim you'll see something frightening. He calls himself, I am a worm. I am not a human being. I am a disgrace to mankind. David, whoa, relax, relax. Very harsh words. You're a disgrace to humankind, to humanity. You're a worm? Says the Melech, yes. Because if I'm always comparing myself to my father, I don't deserve to be alive. I'm a worm. What did I do in my life? You know why? There's the Gemara. Masechet Erubin, Ayin Amud Bet. 
Says the Gemara, the children are the legs of the father. Which means, after the father passes away, the children have to walk in his footsteps. Literally, have to copy the father. It was a Sadiq, obviously. If it's Barminan, it wasn't a Sadiq, they shouldn't be copying anything. Saying, if it was a Sadiq. Says the Gemara, Bera, the son, Kar'ade Abu. The son is the thighs or the legs of the father. Okay, so now it makes perfect sense. Says David the Melech, Hishabti derachai. I was thinking about my ways. I was thinking about my life. And then I realized that I'm the legs of my father. And the, what does he say? Hishabti derachai, the ashi baraglai el edotecha. My legs. Doesn't necessarily mean I walked with my legs because obviously you're walking with your legs, what other organ you're walking with. But when I realize that I'm the legs of my father, I'm the continuation of my father, I have to bring pride and joy to my ancestors. You know what I did? That's what the Pasuk is telling me. Doesn't only mean walk with the Torah or walk to shul. If you realize that we are all over here and everybody that's going to watch this video, if we are all the legs of the legacy our parents left behind, that's a big responsibility. That's a major, huge responsibility upon us. That we always have to plug a way of learn, in learning Torah. Always go and run and do mitzvot and chesed and good deeds. With this, we can understand a Gemara. Says the Gemara like this. Masechet Berachot, Chav Chet Amud Bet. When Rabban Yohanan ben Zakkai was sick on his deathbed, his students came to visit him. And they told him, Rabbeinu Barechenu, Rabbi, give us a Beracha. He was crying and the whole Gemara, he didn't know what road they, they would take him. And they said, Rabbi, give us a Beracha. And he said, Yehi Ratzon, May it, be will, may it be the will of God. May you fear men like you fear heaven. Like you fear God. Pardon me, the other way around. May you fear God like you fear men. And they told him, That's it? What kind of beracha is that? He said, He said, this is the biggest beracha. He says, you should know when a person is alone at home, he says, make sure nobody sees me. Let's close all the curtains, all the shades, make sure there's nobody around because I don't want men to see me. But sometimes we tend to forget that the one above is seeing everything. He says, this is the biggest beracha I could give you. May you fear Hashem like you fear human beings. Says the Ben Ishai on this. Fascinating Ben Ishai. A wonderful Ben Ishai. Wow. He says like this. Haneshama mukhenet b'shem shamayim. Another way of saying neshama is shamayim. Why, Danny? Because neshama literally comes from shamayim. Our bodies come from the earth, from the ground. Our neshama comes from shamayim, says the Ben Ishai. This is the Beracha that the rabbi was giving to his students. You should fear... Shamayim, like you fear human beings. What does that mean? He says, Adam over avera, who has al gufo, penit baze, odit yaser. When a person sins, he's worried that maybe this, has al gufo, penit baze, odit, velachen enoroe, roseshit galeleb ne adam. When a person sins, he doesn't want people to see him, he might be embarrassed. When a person sins, when he transgresses, he's worried maybe people will see me. But does it damage anything in his body? No. But he's not worried of damaging his neshama, which is even worse than people seeing him. That's what the rabbi was giving a beracha. That's the deeper meaning of it. May you be afraid to damage your neshama like you're afraid damaging your reputation, let's say, in front of human beings. 
But you know how you get out of all that? Remember, Im Where do I come from? I come from Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, and the Imahot, Sarar, Kadah, Rahab, Yisrael. Unbelievable. Look where I come from. Says the Ba'la Turim. If you remember that, you will never sin. That's what it means. Im If you walk in my Torah, make the Torah in front of your eyes all the time. I'd like to conclude the class with what the Maharam Sheik says. The Maharam Sheik, uh, he brings a Mishnah Masechet Avot, Pere Gimel Mishnah Aleph. He stakel bishlosha devarim. Then atabali de avera. If you always remember three items, three things, you will never sin. Number one, da'me ayin bata. Remember where you came from. Number two, ulan ataholech. And where are you going? Number three, velifne mi ata atid li ten din vehishbon. And one day after 120, you will stand in front of God Almighty. Hazve Shalom. Hazve Shalom, that's what will happen. You will give a report and an accounting of your life. Says the Maharam Sheik like this. There are three reasons why a person shouldn't sin. Okay, I'd like to hear them. Number one, Harishona. If you just compare yourself to your father, my father used to wake up early in the morning, go to sleep late at night, learning Torah. He didn't miss one Kaddish. He didn't miss one Amen. He didn't miss one Baruch Baruch Shema. Unbelievable. And this golden chain that they pass on to you, this baton, for you in hope that you continue there in their footsteps. And if you veer off that path, you will sever that chain, you will break that chain. That should be enough to stop you from sinning. But if that wasn't enough, Hashanit. My children, if my children see me sinning, what do I expect from them to be sadikim? If I talk in shul, do I expect my children not to talk in shul? It's the funniest thing. The father's talking to his friend in shul, and meanwhile he's telling his son that he's talking to his friend, shh, shh, stop talking. You really think your, your son will take you seriously? That's number two. By remembering what I do, is affecting my children because I am passing the baton to them. Whereas my father passed it on to me. I don't want to be a disgrace in front of my children. That's number two. If that's not enough, number three. He says, number three, forget about your father, about your abot, forget about your children. You yourself. How do you allow yourself to sin? How do you allow yourself to do something so beneath you? Is this why you came to the world? To sin? To indulge? To crave? To desire? This is really why you came to the world? Because in the end of the day, Habibi, you're going to have to give an account and a reporting on everything that you're doing. He says, that's what it means in the Mishnah. Remember where you came from. Your parents, what they did for you. And number two, where are you going? Which means your children that you're leaving behind. And number three, and you, you, where, what are you doing in your life? Yeah, it's raining heavily. What are you doing in your life? With this Maharam Sheik, we could beautifully understand this whole class. David Amelech says, I just thought of my life. I thought of my father Yishai, where I came from. And then I thought about my children. And by the way, David Amelech had some grandchildren. They didn't walk in his way, they were a Sha'im. So he saw the future. He said, Oh my God, what's going to happen? I have to do my best. 
to make sure that I walk in the way of Hashem, lest Hasvish Shalom, something happens down the line. He had great tzaddikim, of course. Shlomo HaMelech, Rehavam, Asa, Hizkiyahu, great tzaddikim. Yoshiyahu, great tzaddikim. Ul'ana Taholech, he says to himself. And where am I going? What am I leaving behind? And then the last one, Lifnemi Ata'atit, Iten Din Vihashbon, in front of you, who are you going to give an accounting, a reporting of all the actions in your life? And we plug back to the beginning of the class. The B. Yoshua ben Nevi says, I know all that. I got all that. I'm good. But I'm afraid that this will get to me. I'm afraid that this will cause me. You know how many times we spoke about it? People feel that they're complacent in their servitude of God. Rabbi, I'm good. Why don't you come into class? Rabbi, I'm good. I learn once a week. I'm good. Really? You're good? Sometimes the Torah that we learn can affect us and give us some arrogance by saying, I'm good. I don't have to go more. But let me ask you a question. Do you say the same thing when it comes to physical? Do you open up only one store and you see that that store is making $10,000 profit a month and you have the ability to open up another store and you say, I'm good. I'm not opening more, but money's good for you, but I'm good. Till today, I never saw a person that says, I have a million dollars in the bank, halivai, and I'm good. I'm good, I don't need more money. Halivai, people thought like that. So, the Bihosh Levi is afraid of Yehuda, afraid of Ga'ava. That's why he says, there was, there was a rainbow. I'm not, I'm not a sadiq. I still have to worship God more. I still have to go more. I still have to learn Torah more. Him, no. But the lesson for us, because he's already in God Eden. But the lesson for us, in telechu, walk in my Torah. Keep walking. That's what it means. Keep walking. Keep elevating yourself. Keep going up and up. Don't say status quo. Status quo is not good. If you're not going up, you're going down. There's no such thing as staying in the same level your whole life. There's no such thing. You're either going up or you're going down. But hopefully we all go up. If you walk in my Torah, you know what will happen? I'll make sure all the materialistic, all the physical, everything comes in the right time. You'll have the money. You'll have the honor, you'll have the pride, you'll have the glory, you'll have everything your heart desires. If, if you walk in my Torah. Baruch Amen,